Hey, I am Brett and I'm an editor here at O'Reilly Media and really one of the core pieces of my job is spending a lot of time with some of the smartest men and women in technology, helping them craft a chapter of a book or work on a lecture they're giving at a conference. And even though I've read those chapters and listened to those lectures, it's really kind of the behind the scenes conversations, the conversations that happen over a cup of coffee, over a beer, that have been the most insightful for me. They're the conversations where one little detail has come out and I thought, that's it. That's why you're so effective at this. That If I could put that into practice, I'd be much more effective at what I do. And really that's the idea behind the O'Reilly Breakdown video series is as much as we can, we're gonna give you the feeling of being in the room with these folks. So we're gonna put them to work, we're gonna let them break down a piece of code, we're gonna let them do something, but we're gonna interject questions. We're gonna say, why did you do that? Why did you choose uh, method A instead of method B? What's, what's, what's happening in your brain as you're making these decisions? And the goal is to give you those same sorts of insights so that you become more effective at what you do, so that you become a better thinker about the things that you're doing every single day. So you're about to see a preview of one of these. We have a, a ton of these coming, everything from cloud computing to iPhone and iPad application development to Adobe Flex and Flash. Uh, you can always visit O'Reilly.com or follow us on O'Reilly Video to see the latest releases, and we hope you enjoy. So we'll come over here, and what we're going to do is we're just going to make this button do something, just okay. so that it has a little bit so of So this activity. is kind of the JavaScript alert. This exactly. This is the yep. system.out.println in Java, yep. just some kind of... Yep. And so what you I talk about these because a lot of people don't use these, and I've seen you use them heavily. Yes, I am I a huge fan. I don't mean to stop you fan. down That's okay. to talk about That's okay. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of these. So basically, the pragma mark, it's, um, it's completely ignored by the compiler. It's stripped out by the preprocessor, right. and it's, it's totally ignored. Um, it's totally used by Xcode, and basically what it gives you is this dropdown, right? Mm -hmm. And so the pragma mark with a dash just gives you the horizontal rule. Right okay. there, it just splits them up. And then pragma mark with a word gives you whatever the words are. So the ones I just added are pragma mark dash and actions. So okay. basically it gives me this little section of actions. So you're building an organization of your code uh, yep, that Xcode gets. Purely for navigation purposes. So I put that in there. Okay. And so now when I put this list down, you'll see there's one I in actions that I can just jump around. And it it's, will pull all the methods and drop them in there? Yes, it, it is as I'm as yep. I'm adding things, it will update nice. this menu. And it, it, there's no end effect of this, there's, you know, it's, it's purely right. for Xcode and my use. But if your code use, gets into thousands of lines, I imagine that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, it just helps me keep things okay. clean. Okay. And you, you, as you're using more delegates and things like that, you just end up with protocols realized all over the place. Right. And so, all right. right. Okay. So anyway, what we'll do here is, so then we're just going to take this and we're going to create a um, uh, UI, uh, yeah, actually, we'll do a UI alert view. And we're just going to create a UI alert view. Like init with title, and we'll just say. Um, well, can know, we just all thank with God zombie. for code completion? <laughs> uh, pressed. Okay, and that's the title, and um, we'll just put something in sure, there for now. Sure. Sure. Uh, we don't need a delegate because we don't need to do anything, um, and we're just going to say okay, uh, and then we don't have any additional buttons. Okay. Now, for, now for folks that are maybe newer that are watching this. I mean, what you just did then looks like black magic. I mean, sure. I know it's not. You know it's not. Sure. Um, how much of this is expertise versus just having done it and done it and done it? Because this looks like just I've I've written that method and that call so many times mm -hmm. that it just comes. That's that's really a lot of it. Um, there's if you're new to development, um, if you're new to Objective C, uh, the syntax can kill you. It takes a little while, and yeah. we just got to keep pushing. And some of our other books and video yeah. courses will get you up on that. Yeah. So you just push through the syntax, and then uh, another a nice trick here is um, for any class, if you hold down Option and double click, it'll pop up the documentation for that right. class, and okay. then from there you can jump to you know actually pulling it up inside of the documentation mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that, or look at the header itself. Right. Um, and so then that'll give you methods, and it'll give you an explanation, right. and then obviously, like you said, the code completion is right. a, is a big piece. Right. Right. So then we're just going to go ahead and we'll take that alert view and we'll show it. Um, oops. And we'll release it. Yeah. Okay, so um, just a quick thing here. So sometimes you'll get a discussion between auto release and actually releasing it. Mm -hmm. So one option, one thing we could do here is we could have wrapped this in an auto release, mm -hmm. um, which means that we wouldn't have to do this release down here at the end. Right. Um, the way that works is basically it gets put into an auto release pool, and mm -hmm. when the event loop finishes for this pass through, that right. stuff will get freed. 
Um, that the, event loop is, is, the event loop is just scoped with the method itself, right? It is scoped with, uh, I wouldn't say it's scoped with the method, it's scoped with the event that triggered this whole dispatch, okay. right? Because it's possible that this method is getting called from somewhere else right. far away, and there's a whole stack yep. frame you're working through here, right? Okay. So we could do it this way, this would be equally correct. Um, the problem with this one, or the, the, the thing to be careful of with this, is as you're doing these auto-releases, is that these things are staying in memory um, until you come out of that event loop. And okay. so from a performance perspective and from a memory overhead perspective, it's not quite as tight. It generally doesn't matter, but it's something to be, if you can do, you know, it's, it's a little cleaner. To go is ahead it better to do yourself. one or the other consistently, or do you find yourself mixing and matching? Um, I find myself mixing and matching depending okay. on what the code looks like. Okay. Um, for instance, if I needed this thing for some huge block of code mm -hmm. with a bunch mm -hmm. of conditionals, Obviously. I don't want to have to worry about did I release it up here? Am I releasing it? To, like, oh, I see. It's a. It's just it. It depends on the block of code, okay. honestly. And so there's times where I will just say, you know what, I don't care. I'm going to auto release this. Okay. Um, and then there's times where, like this, it's it's sure. nice and tidy. I sure. can do it that way. Okay. Right. Okay. So then.